Again, we're bowed heads and humble hearts. Father, we thank you for our last night lying down, for watching over us and keeping us, oh, Father, safe from hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, Lord, because you allowed us to see this day that wasn't promised to us. And, Father, we realize it's not because we've been so good or so kind, but because you're a good God, and we say thank you right now. Oh, Father, as we assemble in your house of worship, we pray right now, Lord, that you move in a mighty way. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would just have its way in this place. Touch these hearts and minds of ours to get in a hurry to worship you, to praise you for who you are. Oh, Lord, we lift you up because you said in your word, if you be lifted up, you will draw. And we ask you right now, Father, to continue to draw man to you, continue to save, set free right now, continue to deliver those that have captive right now. Oh, Father, we pray that you will just loose burdens right now, that you'll just release bondage right now. Oh, we come now in the name of Jesus. We believe, Father, that you're able to do what we need you to do. And we ask right now, Father, oh, that we come before you for no shape, form, or fashion. But we come to lift you up. Touch these hearts of our, touch our minds right now. Let our mind be focused on you. Oh, we know you able. And we know you stand ready to do what we need you to do. We come standing on your word today. In your word it said that we're more than conquerors. And we come today realizing that we're more than conquerors. We come, Father, to cast. We come to cast in your, on your word today. We come stand and believe your word. That if you be for us, you're more than the world against us. Oh, hallelujah. We come right now. The Bible say what two or three are gathered in your name, Father. There you are. We realize that you're here today. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We come because we know there's power in the numbers. There's power in prayer. There's power in deliverance. There's power in your words. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We come now against the enemy right now. We come against hindering spirits. We come against spirit of doubt. We come against spirit that's trying to keep us from our purpose. We come against spirit that's coming up against our destiny. We come against spirits that's trying to keep us from drawing closer to you. We come right now believing you, knowing that you're able, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Lose your healing power right now. Somebody need healing right now. Loose your healing power right now. Oh, hallelujah. Touch our finances right now. Oh, somebody need a financial blessing. Touch our blessings right now. Oh, Father God, we pray right now that you're going to the hospitals. Touch those on that hospital bed. There are beds of affliction. Move right now. Touch in this community right now. Touch the non-believers. Touch those that are in doubt right now as to who you are. Touch those that are despair, that are in poverty. We ask that you have your way. Oh, in the name of Jesus, move this thy servant out of self. Speak through me. Speak for me. Hide me behind the cross that you may be glorified. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So that is a name. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus today? Do you love him? He's worthy to be loved. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praises, giving all praises to our Heavenly Father. Honor to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the ministers of the gospel. It's good to be here one more time. Amen. And we need the atmosphere to be right. Amen. In order that God can move. Amen. So many times, amen, the spirit, the atmosphere, there's hindrance in the atmosphere. And when hindrance come, it keeps you from being obedient. To what God wants you to do. It keeps you from being obedient to God's words. So right now we come against hindering spirits in the atmosphere. 
that are working against our minds to receive God. We're, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every head, over every mind, over every heart, over every household that's in this place. Amen. From St. John chapter 6, verse 5 through 9. St. John chapter 6, verse 5 through 9. Reads, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, what shall we buy bread? Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Phil answered him, eight, eight months' wages would not be enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another disciple, another his disciple, Andrew, Simon Peter, brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. But how far will they go among so many? Amen. We just talked to you for a few minutes. God is more than enough. Amen. I want you to look to your neighbor. Repeat after me. God is more than enough. Not God is just enough, but God is more than enough. You may be seated. God is more than enough. Amen. In this particular passage of scripture, there were many who had came to Jesus for whatever reason they had in their hearts. They came. Believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, some only came to receive the benefit of being in the crowd. Uh, some came to, to receive the blessings that were going to come forth from being there. Amen. Do you not no, there are people who will just hang around you because they know God is blessing you. Amen? Amen. And you cannot get mad at them because uh, they want some of it to rub off on them. There's a song, Lord, whatever you do in this season. Y'all don't hear me today. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're blessing in this season, don't do it without me. Me and so many times, my brother and sister, we want God. We, we're not concerned whether God is going to do anything with us or not. Uh, many of them knew that Christ would oftentimes feed those who were hungry. Amen. So if you needed a good meal, you were hungry, all you had to do was find out where Jesus was. All you, you had to do is find out where the camp meeting was going to be, and you could be assured that you were going to be fed. Yeah. A lot of folks only come to church when it's feeding time. Amen. You talking about having something to eat at the church, the church house be packed because somebody wants something to eat. Amen. But I, but I want you to understand that uh, it's it, it, Every week, there is something to eat in the house of God. Oh, there's a spread every week. And the problem is many of us do not want what is being offered at the table. We, 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 we don't want it, so it has to be food for our natural body in, us, in order for us to show up. But you can rest assured that some came just to eat. But that was a problem, my, my brother and sister. That was a problem that had taken place with all these people, with this crowd, with this multitude that had showed up. And Jesus asked his disciples, uh, what would be the solution to the problem? The, the problem was that there were so many people, and, and they had listened to 
Christ preached the word, but now here they were. They was hungry. They was hungry. Many times, my brothers and sisters, we look at what we have and think that it's not enough. This, Andrew said, well, we, we have five barley loaves and two fish. Then he says, but how far would that go? Anybody over there now? You look and you open your corn first and you say, oh, I got a few dollars. And, but how far would that go? that we don't have enough. Uh, but, but, but my brothers and sisters, many times we look at what we have and, and think it's not enough, but, but I want you to understand, if my brothers and sisters, if we give, if we think sometimes that if we give this little that we think is not enough, then it leaves nothing for us. Anybody over here? We're always trying to, to figure out how we're going to, to make it when God has all, already given us the answer. I, I, I do that a lot. I'm worrying, bumping my head against the wall, how I'm going to make it, how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do that. But God has already given us the answer, and the answer is his word. We have to trust God at his word through the Bible. We are told to trust who? Trust who? God. Not trust Man, not trust yourself, not trust your mama, not trust your daddy, not trust your co-worker, not trust your friend, not trust your job, not trust your automobile, don't trust your bank, don't trust your 401k. It does not say trust in all that, but it says trust in who? The Lord. Trust in the Lord. Because you got to understand all that other stuff here today and gone today. We cross scriptures that God will make a way and don't believe it, I said. He may not come when you want him to, but he's on time. And that part about he may not come when you want him to, and that gap in between, he's on time. What are we doing in the midst of that gap? We begin to doubt God, begin to doubt his word. We oftentimes say to the Lord, I need you to increase my faith. But we have to understand that you have the faith that you need. Y'all don't believe that though. You have the faith. The Bible says faith coming from hearing and hearing by the word of God. And to prove that you have faith, uh, Romans 12 and 3 say, For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, this is Paul, right? Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given who? You. Not your neighbor. But he said, measure of faith that God has given you. My brothers and sisters, we need to stop hollering about, Lord, increase my faith. But God required that we, it's time for us to become faithfulness. To have faithfulness. All believers have faith, but we require, but what is required is faithfulness. You have to make the choice. Will I be faithful or put God on the back burner? In the synopsis gospel, Jesus instructs the disciples to give them something to eat. If you go back and look at the same story in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you'll see Jesus, he, he tells them, give them something to eat. He did not say that. John does not record him saying that, but in the other gospel, he said, give them something to eat. And so many times we feel that it's somebody else's responsibility to give. Somebody come to you, uh, you know, you got to pay the bill. Uh, you Some people might say, 
make some groceries. You ever heard somebody say that? So you have to be compassionate enough to see the need. And not only see the need, but you have to respond to the need. My brothers my brother and sisters, the disciples, there were four things that had taken place after they seen the need. First, the disciples suggest that Jesus send the people away. That was one of the solutions. Let's just send them away. Don't worry about the problem. We can just deal with this problem and we just send them away. Yeah. And so many times, my brother and sister, we as believers, we just want to send people away. We, we do not want to deal with the issue that people face with in life. Because we feel that we're on this level, that people are not on the same level with us. We don't want to deal with it. We'll just send them away. But the Bible tells us, we, we understand Jesus say the church is a hospital. Yeah, yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. He said, I come to save that which was lost. Yeah. Send them away. Don't worry about the problem. Just, just send it away. But when you send the problem away, you understand it's still a problem. Yeah. What you just send, you just send the problem to someone else. Yeah. So they said, uh, just send it away. Then my brother and sister, the second solution came from Philip in response to our Lord Tess question. He said, raise enough money to buy food for the people. Amen. But how will they be able to raise enough money to buy food for all those people? What they were doing, they were looking for uh, a remedy, a natural remedy for a spiritual problem. The third solution came from Andrew but he was not quite sure how the problem would be solved. He found a little boy who had a small lunch, two fish, and five barley cakes. But he said, I don't know how far this is going to go. Or I don't know what we're going to do with this. The fourth solution came from our Lord, and it was the true solution. He took the little boy's lunch, blessed it, broke it, handed it out to his disciples, and they fed the whole crowd. We have to understand that our salvation equals obligation. Can I get a witness? So many times we see problems. It's, it's not just seeing the problem, but observation means that we must be willing to uh, have an obligation. My second point is, at first I said you have to be compassionate enough to see uh, the, the problem. Then, my brothers and sisters, my second point is you have to be willing to trust God. You have to be willing to trust God with everything. So many times we just trust God with a little bit. Uh, but the Bible says we have to trust God with everything. When we have an abundance of substance, we are willing to trust God. Oh, when, I, when we got... A lot of money in our bank account, we'll say, God will make a way for you. God is a good God. When the bills are paid, God is great. I just love praying his name. God is supplying my needs. Oh, my brother and sister, when we have a bond of us, we are willing to trust God. But do we really trust him? Or are we trusting what we have and the ability to get what we have? My brother and sister, it seems that when we're at the bottom of the barrel, when our substance is at its least, uh, we begin not to trust God. We begin to look at our own ability. I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've been there, my brothers and sisters, where when things got low, when I really had to trust the Lord, I began to look around and began to question, 
Well, the God will truly make a way out of no way. But God really show up on time. That he may not come when I want him, but he was always on time. Oh, oh, my brothers and sisters, it's so easy to, to quote those things. But when we look at this, a lad had two fish and five barley loaves. And he was willing to trust God. He, he was willing to give all he had unto the Lord. Oh, the practical lesson is clear. Whenever there is a need, give all that you have to Jesus and let him do the rest. And we would learn this in our life, in our daily walk, my brother and sister. Give what you have to Jesus and he will do the rest. Begin with what you have, but be sure you give it all to him. Yes, my brothers and sisters. What are you saying? Give it all to him. Well, uh, when we see this little lad is to be commended for sharing his lunch with Christ. And his mother is to be commended for giving him something to give to Jesus. Yes, we must be willing to trust the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord mm -hmm, with all your heart. That's not just some of your heart, but the Bible says trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You know how it is. We're, we're willing to give somebody our heart. When you meet a new person, you're in a relationship, you're willing to give them all your heart. And when things don't go right, you say, well, that person broke my heart. But I'm here to let you know today the Lord won't break your heart. You can trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs, he, Solomon writes, and lean not to your own understanding. You have to understand why he said don't lean to your own understanding because some of us have a bad understanding. Have you ever met somebody whose understanding is real bad? They only see things their way and no matter what you say, you can talk to your blue in the face they're only going to see it their way. So he says, don't lean to your own understanding. But in all your ways, not some of your ways, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. In other words, whatever decision that you're making in life, in all your ways, in all of your decisions, in all the things that you are and doing in life, he says, acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. Oh, the other translation, he will direct your path. I don't know about you today, but I know God is able to direct my path because he has already seen my path. He had already made a path for me. Oh, I feel good right now. My third and final point, my brother and my sister, when you give all you have, when you give all, you have, there will always be something left over. Can I get a witness today? There are some people who don't like leftovers. Isn't that right? You know, we got the holidays coming up, and some of us are going to have some leftovers after Thanksgiving. I remember growing up, I hated the holidays because I got tired of those leftovers. Old Turkey was in the refrigerator till you just seen his little real bones. After a while, I say, I'm tired of those leftovers. But when we look at this, the Bible says that Jesus blessed uh, the sack lunch and gave my brothers and sisters. And everyone ate what they wanted. In other words, they did not have to try to mm -hmm, just get a little bit so that somebody else could get something. But they ate their full. In other words, they ate their desire. They ate until they was full. Yes, they did. There was enough to feed the mother to. And I want you to understand when you give all you have, there will always be something left over. Yes, we see Jesus begin to bless it. Then he began to get to his disciples to give out. But when I think about this, I think about this little lad. 
mm -hmm, who was willing to give his sack lunch. We had the young people down here in the front and not all of them were willing to give what they had. So this young lad, he was willing to give his own little sack lunch. Yes, my brother and my sister. I read my brother and sister Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19 through 20. And know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness. Yes, my brother and sister. There will always be something left over because we have to understand that God is more than enough. Yes, he is. And he feeds and he says in uh, verse 20, now to him that is able. Do you know God is able today? He's able to make a way out of no way. Do you know God is able when the doctor say they can't do nothing for you? Do you know God is able? He right now unto him that is able to do it seemingly abundantly mm -hmm, above all that we ask or think. In other words, God can go beyond what your little mind thinks. He can go beyond the barriers that you have put in place. He said he can go above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, good God Almighty. I want you to understand today that God is more than enough. Um, yes, he is. Um, the Bible says um, that the multitude was there. And after they received the words, um, somebody said we ought to just send them home. Um, ain't that all right? Uh, but Jesus realized um, there was a need. Uh, good God Almighty. Um, you got to understand today. Um, before somebody um, can trust your God, um, they got to first trust you. Um, and Jesus looked out uh, among them uh, and seen the need uh, but he didn't just see the need uh, and not do nothing about it uh, so many times um, we'll see a need uh, good God almighty uh, we'll walk by knees uh, all day long uh, we'll sit by a need uh, all day long uh, we'll run around a need uh, all day long uh, we'll drive by a need uh, Ain't that all right? Uh, Y'all don't hear me, uh, but I heard uh, good God Almighty. Uh, he said, look out, um, what we going to do? Uh, ain't that all right? Uh, he didn't say, what y'all going to do? Uh, but Jesus said, um, what are we going to do? Uh, this gives the assurance uh, to know that you're not uh, in this thing um, by yourself. Uh, that Christ uh, is with you. Uh, and if you got a little, he can make it enough. Uh, won't he do it? Uh, Yes, he will. Uh, and the Bible said uh, he took uh, what he had. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, and the key to it, my brothers and sisters, uh, you got to start uh, thanking God uh, for what he gives you. Uh, you got to start uh, praising God uh, for what he's doing. Uh, you got to start uh, lifting the Lord up. Uh, the Bible said uh, he took what he had. Uh, he raised it up uh, to let people know uh, that God was uh, the source uh, of the solution. Uh, that God was the one uh, that's going to make a way. Uh, the Bible said uh, that he blessed it. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, and then he gave. Uh, this he did. Uh, so many times uh, we get blessings uh, and don't want to give uh, nobody nothing. Uh, but when they gave, uh, the Bible said, uh, when they got through um, picking up the fragments, uh, there was 12 uh, baskets there. Uh, oh my God, uh, ain't God Ava. I stopped to tell you, uh, he's more uh, than enough. Uh, do you know the day uh, that he's more than enough? Uh, do you know the day uh, God uh, brought you uh, from a mighty long way? Uh, I don't think y'all hear me today. Uh, I serve God, uh, good God Almighty, uh, that's been good to me uh, all of my life. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, I heard the sound right and say, all of my life, the Lord been good to me. 
not just yesterday, not just tomorrow, but when I look back over, he's been there all the time. Haven't he been there? Do you know he's been there? Do you know God watched over you and carried you and kept you when you didn't want to be kept, when you didn't know you was being kept? It was nobody but the Lord. God, he's more, he's more than enough. Won't he do it? That was a time in my life. Mm-hmm, my brothers and sisters. Oh, hallelujah. I remember a time mm-hmm, when I was young. Mm-hmm, Sometimes when you're young, you don't know what you're going to do. And fear is not your friend. Yes. But I found out that I never went hungry. Good God Almighty. I never went without any clothes. Yeah. My lights ain't been turned on. I have not been homeless. But God has been good to me. And in our Sunday school class today, somebody said what the Hebrew boy said. Oh, King. If our God don't deliver us, it's not because he can't. If I go through some days where I ain't got nothing to eat, it's not because my God cannot supply my needs. If I get put out of my dwelling place, I heard good God Almighty. The Lord is a refuge, a present help. In a time of trouble, I can abide under the shadows of the Almighty, good God Almighty. Sometimes you got to go down before you can go up. And I heard he will exalt you in due season. Won't God do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? And if my lights get turned on, maybe God is telling me, I need some of your time. I need you to cut the TV off. Turn the PlayStation off. Cut the computer off. And I need you to spend a little time with me. The songwriter said, you can have a little talk with Jesus. You can tell him all about your trouble. Won't God hear you cry? Won't he come to your rescue? Yes, he will. And before I take my seat, I stop to tell you today, no matter what you're faced with, no matter what you're going through in life, God is more than enough to overcome whatever you're faced with, whatever addiction you got, whatever situation you're going through. If you're in depression, God is more than enough. If you need clothes on your back, Says 5,000 men were fed, not including women and children. See, we just focus on the 5,000. But when you run reference, you find out that it was well over 13,000 people that Jesus fed with five barley loaves and two fish. See, God is more than enough. You might have thought that he just had enough for the 5,000. But he went beyond the 5,000. And then when he finished, there was something left over. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise him. You may be going through a situation in your life right now. And the enemy is telling you that God does not have enough resources to bring you through.
But I, I want you to understand God is the only person I know that spoke and things became spoke and the world became in existence. God can speak into your life right now. I'm bigger than the situations. I'm bigger than the problems. I'm bigger than your lack of faithfulness. I have more than, than enough. And that's one and eight it said that Jesus said, You shall receive power. After the Holy Spirit come upon you, you, you shall receive power and you shall be my witnesses. The Greek word dumos means what we get the word dynamite from means an explosion. So Christ is saying, Power, you that should be an explosion. You shall receive power. There should be an explosion and you shall be my witness. Then over in Galatians, tell us about the fruit of the Spirit when it talks about love, joy, kindness, faithfulness. Long suffering. When, when they talk about these things, and, and sometimes you look at people's life and you say, Lord, why are they not exemplifying these things? Because you said that we're supposed to, I'm supposed to have love. I, I'm supposed to have joy. I'm supposed to have long suffering. I should be faithful. It's time, my brothers and sisters, to allow the Holy Spirit to release these things in our life because you have the power. Say the power that working in us. The power is working in us. God is more than enough. He, he's more than your situation. He, he's more than your doubt. He's more than your unbelief. So many times we let the enemy trick us up. And... So he ain't talking to you today. He, he talking to maybe that person in front of you. He's talking to the person in front of you. Surely God, he, he's not talking to me. Because you know what? I'm not that bad after all. I make it to church every now and then. I come to Bible study sometimes. I give here and there. Surely he, he's not talking about me. We need to come out of denial. You know the saying that an alcoholic cannot get any help until he admits that he's an alcoholic. We, we have to come out of denial. A child of God cannot get any help until he admits to himself that he's not doing, he or she is not doing according to what God's word had instructed them. If you're not being faithful, then you need to tell yourself, I know I'm not being faithful. And God, I need to release some faithfulness in my life. If you're not loving people like God said love, you just ask the Spirit of God to release love in my life. If you're walking around here depressed all the time, going off in any, everybody for any, every reason, and you ain't got no joy, you need to ask God to release the joy in my life. You think being kind is so hard to do. Ask God's spirit to release the kindness that you said I have. It's in me. It's in me. And I need you to release it. I need it to be released. Anybody here ever had some money? Uh -huh. You got like income tax check. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Did you file your income tax check? Sometimes you go rapid and they give you a little number you can call to see if your money been released. Did nobody have to tell you to call and 
man, I've got a call. See, my money on his way. Then when you're calling, it might say, well, we have no record yet. We have no record. We, or it might say we're processing it. It's being processed. You say, oh, it's being processed. See, God, he's processing some stuff in us. He's processing some stuff in us. And, but then one day when you call, they say it has been processed. It has been released on such and such a day. You get a little happy. You say, it ought to be in my account by tomorrow. I want you to understand God is want, God wants to release some stuff right now. According to his spirit. And we would just be real with ourselves. 